Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Politics on Channels Television and happy Eid al-Adha celebration to Muslims around the country. Well, here's what we have for you on the show today. As Nigeria celebrates Eid al-Kabir, President Bola Tinubu reminds citizens that the sacrifice required of a good citizen is key to building a united and harmonious society. He shares his vision for a nation where citizenship and responsibility go hand in hand. And it's decision day in River State as the tenure of a local government chairman lapses today. What will be the next move for the pro wiki group of lawmakers? And will Governor Fubara go ahead to nominate caretaker chairs? More importantly, what does the law say? We have all of that package for you on the show this morning. But let's begin uh, with the big one. And here's what President Bola Tinubu has to say to Nigerians. He says some level of sacrifice is what the nation needs to move forward and this is as nigerians of course observe the public holiday today to mark this year's idel kabir in president bolatinabu's words as citizens what we need is to be committed members of our society loving our country loving your neighbors sharing what you have with each other he made this call after salah prayers at dodden barracks here in lagos <laughs> Follow the path of sacrifice. Sacrifice being a very good citizen. It comes with responsibilities as citizens. What do you do as a citizen to be a very committed uh, member of our society? That is sacrifice. Loving your country, loving your neighbors, share what we have with each other, and be thankful to Almighty God. Oh, while all of that is happening, well, River State politics is not on break, absolutely. It's decision day in the south-south state of Rivers, a day that marks the end of a three-year tenure for elected local government chairman a milestone documented in the state local government law. Well, Governor Similai Fabara, uh, at a function recently, had reminded uh, recently uh, the council chairman that their days in office are numbered. He's, however, being expected by political watchers to make a definite decision on the chairmanship of the 23 local government areas. Oh, we understand that his constituents have been conversing support for his administration. And take a listen. Uh, to some of the points they made. The celebration of the anniversary of Governor Fubara's one year in office clearly demonstrated the victory for democracy as rivers people stood strong and overpowered the anti-democratic forces that attempted to steal the mandate of the people through an unwarranted, baseless impeachment plot on our dear governor. The array of impactful people-driven projects and programs across the state is not only boosting the economy of our dear state, but indeed a clear testament of the popular public good when the righteous rule the people choice. Well, elsewhere, a group of young people under the aegis of Ijo Young Professionals Association have advised Governor Similai Fabara to lead in front to sincerely resolve the political impasse between him and his predecessor, Yesam Wike. The president of the group, Abiye Achekweka, dispelled insinuations that the former governor, Wike, is anti-Ijo. He said this, uh, well, he said rather that while Governor Fubara's economic blueprint looks good, such aspirations can only be achieved when complete peace is achieved in the state. We like to state that as governor of River State, Wike chose his deputy from a jaw extraction. The appointment of a jaw sons and daughters into key positions as his executive members and further and picking the current governor of River State as a successor goes a long way to show how he loves a jaw people and uh, how balanced his leadership style flows. Significantly, even as minister of ACT, the former governor of River State 
has given momentous uh, nominations and appointments to a judge. And when there is any crisis between father and son, there's always a room for settlement. While we have advised the current governor of River State to approach uh, the, uh, to the line of peace is because uh, he has a very fantastic uh, economic recovery plan and also would in potential investors into the state. When the investors come in, definitely there will be job opportunities for young professionals. Well, all eyes now on River State. As we did say earlier on, it's decision day. It's a big day. June the 17th, a day that the tenure of uh, the local government chairman uh, is meant to elapse. But the big question is, what will be the next move for this local government chairman, for Governor Fubara himself, and uh, of course for the Amawili group in the state assembly? I recall that Governor Fubara recently uh, at a public function, reminded the council chairman that their days in office are numbered. So he's been expected by political watchers to make a definite decision on the chairmanship of the 23 local government areas today. Well, today has become some sort of a flashpoint, really, for political turmoil, largely due to the escalating feud between uh, Governor Siminalai Fubara and his predecessor, Mr. Yusam Wike, who is now the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory. Now, this, by the way, dates back to last year uh, when we saw the split uh, of 27 members uh, rallying behind Martin Amiwile, while four members followed the leader of the House, who was a deputy speaker in the last assembly. That's Edison here. And uh, this went to court back and forth. And uh, recently, the decision of the appeal court, uh, which some expected would have ordinarily put to rest the confusion, uh, we see, or wait to see, uh, how that palpable tension uh, would subside, particularly when Mr. Martin Amiwili and his 24 colleagues addressed the media on the same day of the appeal court ruling to warn that the assembly, referring to himself and his colleagues, will not accept a list of caretaker committee members. We'll bring you more on this unfolding development in River State. But staying in the South-South region, but a different party altogether, the APC, where the coordinator of the All Progressives Congress South-South Zone, Basi Otu, has assured the national body of ensuring that the zone continues to work hard for more states in the South-South region to join the party. We're we'll speaking in Calabar, the Cross River State Capital, at the South-South APC National Executive Committee meeting. Uh, the governor actually explained that the president has put a lot in place to better the nation and only uh, the only way to support him is by ensuring that the ABC family keeps expanding and continues to deliver on the renewed hope agenda's objectives. He also urged party members to show more commitment in their support for the party and president. This meeting is a culmination of recent consultative visits by the executive members of our party in preparation for our winning most states in the South South Geopolitical Zone before and during the general election. As a person, this meeting means a lot to me. The Almighty God himself detests loneliness. He said, looking unto Abraham, it is not good that you should be alone. I read the lips of our dear president, Mr. Wallach Martinibu, and the leader of our great party research. He said it's not good that Governor Two of Prosper State should be alone in the South South region. <laughs> Let's add more and more states to him so that the zone will be politically warm within the APC temperature. We are here to translate Mr. President's wish to reality and to ace our task and justify his demand. It's not about thought. It's about what you're able to do. The people will only judge you by what, by what you put on ground. That's why we are happy with the president, President Paul Abetunibu. What he's doing now is renewing the hope of Nigerians. He also had the courage to remove the first subsidy. This by the pains. They are temporary. They will soon be over. 
I went round the Dangote refinery and I found out that Nigeria is about, by this July, to become self-sufficient in the production of PMS. As of today, it produces enough diesel and it's already exporting to other countries. In terms of fertilizer, it has more than enough for Nigeria and beyond. It's already exporting to other countries. Exporting urea to America, to Brazil, to South Korea, so many places from Nigeria. So we are getting to that era in the country where we consume what we produce and produce what we consume. So things are getting better. Very soon, we'll conclude the negotiations on the minimum wage, and Nigerians will be happy for it. Well, let's head over to Taraba State now, where Governor Agbu Kefas has announced the preparedness of his administration to pay any amount agreed upon by the federal government and labor unions as a new national minimum wage. He says the welfare of workers in the state remains his responsibility, and he'll work to continue to ensure that their rights and privileges are protected. We will speak in shortly after an inspection tour of ongoing projects in the state capital, Chalingo. Governor Agbu Kefas, alongside members of the State Assembly, State Executive Council, among others, are inspecting ongoing projects across Jalingo, the state capital, to ensure compliance to standard and timely completion. The first port of call is the 5.3 million liters multipurpose reservoir built to provide adequate, efficient and affordable water supply to over 2 million residents of the state and the ongoing upgrading of the Dambaba Suntai Airport to international standard. Beyond the inspection, the governor takes his time to explain his position on state police and the proposed national minimum wage. Committee police or state police, some governors will misuse it. Governors cannot stay there forever. Let's talk about you must face reality on ground. For me, I have the, the military in my state, their presence here. I have the, the police, I have the civil defense, I have the state security services, I have the custom, I have the immigration. It is now my responsibility with these huge resources, security agencies that are here, in, right in my state, to put them together with the local. We have vigilantes, we have Taraba marshals, we have hunters, we have uh, local, traditional uh, security people. So if I have all these resources and I put them together, I can achieve a lot. The federal government is willing to improve the welfare of the workers, the same thing at the state level. So we are with them, whatever they arrive at, we'll make sure we'll follow. We are also talking even behind uh, the, 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 the scene to ensure that uh, we, we reach at something. So I don't think it's going to be an issue. As the governor assures residents of a unique governance policy to address all its teething problems, especially in infrastructure decay and education, Civil servants remain expectant of a new minimum wage coming into force very soon. We'll talk a moment now and when we return, lunchtime politics continues. Stay with us. You're welcome back to the program. As we said early on, it's a big day in River State, South South Nigeria. Perhaps another chapter in what has turned out to be a long winding political drama in the state. But well, we have joining us on the show to give us legal perspectives uh, to this, Mr. Henry Ikene, who is the National Legal Advisor of the Committee for the Defense and Human Rights, a CDHR, as well as Mr. Tony Sipoto Pepple, also a legal practitioner. Gentlemen, welcome to Lunchtime Politics. Yes, um, good afternoon. Thank, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be here on your platform. Uh, well, let me begin with. Uh, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Right, good to have you. Let me begin with you, Mr. Ekine. Uh, yes. The law is quite clear on the tenor for the local government chairman. But what we have seen is different undercurrents, different parties, uh, you know, pulling at the law, at least what the law says. So let's establish this to begin with. What does the law say about the tenor of local government chairman? According to law, what happens to them from today? 
Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, um, expressly, um, Section 9, Subsection 1 of the River State Local Government Law 2018 is an extant law, an existing law, and then is a legal framework that regulates and provides for the tenure of local councils as elected chairman, vice chairman, and councillors. And that um, section provides clearly for a three-year term. That's to say, in River State, um, elected council members of the uh, 23 local government areas will serve for three years and no more. Uh, and that would expire today, 17th um, June 2024, having been elected sometime in April of 2021, and then sworn in on the 17th of uh, June 2021. So their tenures expire um, today. Uh, by midnight, 17th of June 2024, is the statutory expiration date of um, um, local councils in River State. And let me establish one thing, uh, Kyle. Uh, the, the fundamental legal framework with respect to local government system in Nigeria would include the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, precisely Section 7 of that um, constitution, which uh, established the local government system and guaranteed um, democratically elected uh, councils. However, Section 7 went um, further to vest in the states the power to make laws with respect to the structure and administration and other matters uh, for local government. And that is how the respective um, state houses of assembly across the 36 states of the federation got the power um, to enact the local government laws. And then it means also that the tenure for local government councils in the respective states will be determined by that law. And that's in River State, enacted since 2018, the existing extant law, is that Section 9 is expressed. So it does not really um, create any room for um, um, subjective assumptions or even argument with respect to the tenure of council members. It's three years and nothing more. And then the current council members will have their tenures expired today, at most at midnight. So let me take this to Mr. Sipoto Peppel. Um, I don't know what your take is on this, but it, the law is quite clear. So what happens? Should they say, well, uh, we'll still stay in office beyond this, uh, maybe relying on some a certain law that was passed uh, by the Amehule group and, and, and all of that. I know there's a court ruling on all of that, but help us understand uh, what should happen moving forward, just in case they say we're staying. Okay, um, as a legal practitioner and one who would stand for the rule of law, it is advisable for the chairman to understand that the society needs the rule of law and respect for the law to prevent a situation of anarchy. The law, the purported law rather, of which most of these soon to be former chairmen are standing on, had been declared invalid, illegal, and not in any way applicable because the route which we, with which they went about it was completely uh, well, Mr. Supporter Peppel, we'll um, try to reestablish connection. Uh, looks like there's a uh, some interference there with the connection. But let me come back to you, Mr. Kine. Uh, and I wonder if you align with him, particularly uh, what happens from now. If, should they say, what well, we're staying put? What are your thoughts? Uh, that's for you, Mr. Kine. Yes, I can, I can hear you. Um, the, the, the apparent response to that is that uh, any, any attempt or uh, uh, purport by any council member, whether a chairman or a vice chairman or a councillor, um, to stay beyond midnight of 17th of June 2024 will be, uh, amount to constituting himself 
in a manner that will breach the peace and then disorder, and then that will apparently create a criminal um, um, conduct. Uh, and of course, for me, my recommendation will be that the security agency should pick up such person. But then moving forward um, democratically, like, okay, let me ex- emphasize something here so that I would not be taken to subscribing to undemocratic moves. Um, I am a constitutional adherent. Um, Section 7 of the Constitution should be respected by all authorities and all persons and all states in the Federation. That is to say, we imagine that we should have all 774 councils in Nigeria um, um, at all times headed by elected um, councillors and chairmen and vice chairmen. However, like I said earlier, um, the Constitution vested the power in the House of Assembly to make laws. Even where I hold as a lawyer that uh, the purported uh, attempt by legislators and the respective legislative houses to make laws to uh, the effect that you can even appoint caretaker committees or any other nomenclature for any um, administrator or head of the councils other than democratically elected council, that would be unconstitutional, unconstitutional rather. But if, to the extent that the River State Local Government Law of 2018 is extant, to the extent that it's existing, to the extent that it has not been appealed and nullified, to the extent that it has not been declared by any court at the moment as being inconsistent with the provisions of the Constitution and therefore null and void, that's actually what it is, but maybe until someone takes on that before the courts and it's so declared, Mm. to the extent that it does exist, that appears to be the only seemingly legitimate, arguably so anyway, seemingly legitimate approach for the next step in River State. That's to say, the council members should exit office. It doesn't belong. It's not hereditary. It's not right. their birthright. They were elected into office for definite time. Some of them have served two terms and then sworn into office. Remember, they took an oath not to stay beyond the three years. Right. So they should exit office. Then immediately thereafter, as I, I can tell you, the way the law is now, elections were not even expected to be conducted until after today. The River State Local Government Law 2018 that is the existing law now is to the effect that the River State Independent Electoral Commission shall conduct election anytime 90 days after, after the expiration of the term of a council um, in, in local government. That means after today, right. the next 90 days, they have the window to conduct that election. And that same law, sorry, also permits the governor to constitute a caretaker committee to run the affairs of local government pending the uh, conduct of such elections. So since that is the law that exists in River State, let us at least to that extent hold on to the rule of law until right. decided otherwise. Uh, let's let's try and speak with Mr. Sipoto Peppel now. Um, well, so we need to understand what should happen next so we can better manage expectations and ensure that there's a, a peaceful resolution at least to this chapter in the back and forth. So do you expect the governor now to uh, institute a caretaker uh, arrangement for the local government? What does the law say about that? Does that negate the need to have properly elected chairman, Mr. Sipoto Peppel? Okay, just like my colleague has correctly pointed out, the extant law is the law of 2018. And it makes provision for caretaker committees to be put in place at the end of the tenure of elected council chairmen and their councillors. And that is what we expect the governor to do, to put in place these caretaker committees who will be in charge of the council until proper elections are done and Elected officials are now in charge of this local government council. This is, Peppel. Yes, this this is, is where the rubber meets the road. Uh, pardon me. I just yes. wanted to get your thought. Now, this is where the rubber meets the road. The Amawule group yes. says they've not gotten such a uh, memo, to just put it in that sense. They've not gotten anything from the governor. So who is it meant to present this to? When is it meant to present it? Because I imagine we, we cannot have a void anyway. So who and when? It is clear that it is clear that there's a standing order of court, which the Amehule group is trying or is at the court of appeal, which we had a few days ago 
or rather some of the interlocutory applications, routine interlocutory applications which they made were heard a few days ago and they were required to maintain status quo. That court order had mandated them, directed them to stop parading themselves as members of the House of Assembly. So clearly, going by that decision, the governor, we do not expect that the governor will revert to them, but he will revert to the standing House of Assembly for whatever approvals that he has. Which is, get from um, which is that standing House of Assembly? The one led by Honorable, the Right Honorable Victor Kojombo. These are members of the House of Assembly who we have no contention about their membership of the House of Assembly. Uh, Mr. Kene, do you because agree? Said, uh, pardon me, uh, Mr. Kene, do you agree with this? The Amehule group, stop parading yourself. Yes, yes. I'm right. appealing it. Right. Yeah, yes, Just Kari, a moment, that's, Mr. That's, Mr. Kari, Kari, Mr. Kari, Kene. Kari, that's the position. Kari, that's the position of the law, and that's the only right way to go. Um, the governor has a public duty. Um, I'm afraid that we shouldn't have a vacuum, like you rightly observed. The governor has a public duty to as much as possible and as quickly as he can, whichever way he thinks he should do that, that between now and midnight of today, that um, um, some form of administration at our local government level should be established. Right. And the only legal form that is allowed by the local government law right now is that the governor shall constitute uh, critical committees of about five or thereabouts and then have them confirmed by the University House of Assembly. And we right. do have... Um, the University House of Assembly by Right Honorable Victor Okojombo. Well, so I do not expect that uh, Amehule is saying that uh, he hasn't got any communication. He, he shouldn't expect one. He right. isn't actually going to get any from the governor. The governor wouldn't, like, he knows that, right. that the governor will expect well, Mr. communication uh, Victor Okojombo. Yes, please. We have to anchor at this point, but clearly uh, today is a very vital day for the people of River State. I would like to thank you, very gentlemen, uh, for providing insight into this matter. Mr. Henry Kinney, National Legal Advisor to, uh, of the Committee for the Defense of Human Rights, and Mr. Toye Sipoto Peppel, also a legal practitioner. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on Lunchtime Politics. Thank you, Kerry. Always my pleasure to be on your platform. Quite appreciate it. Well, there you have it. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. All eyes on River State. So stay with Channels Television. I will bring you all of the breaking stories. But we'll anchor at this point. Thank you for watching. I'm Kyrie Kikulu. Have a happy holiday.